The Emancipation Proclamation authorized the recruitment of black volunteers for federal service beginning January 1, 1863. In May of that year, Brigadier General Edward A. Wild began recruiting for the first North Carolina colored volunteers. The unit was to be led by James Beecher, the half-brother of writer Harriet Beecher Stowe, the famed author of Uncle Tom's Cabin. Wild, who had lost an arm at South Mountain in September 1862, enlisted men in the Newburn area, which was home to a large population of African Americans. 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation takes effect. Freedom seekers throughout the South and Eastern North Carolina find their way evading slave dogs through swamps and the brack to reach the destination known as James City. In James City, here on the banks of the Noose River, becomes an oasis of freedom. Freedom seekers from nearby plantations, turpentine orchards, flock to the Union camp of General Burnside's expedition to Eastern North Carolina after the March 1862 Battle of New Bern. Those freedom seekers included men like Henry, William Henry Singleton, who was formerly enslaved here in Craven County, North Carolina, and the only means through which he could attain his freedom was through permission of his slaveholder working as part of the Confederate Army. And after the December 1862 Battle of Kingston, North Carolina, Singleton comes down the Southwest Creek out of Lenore County into Craven County through one of these tributaries and finds his way into James City where Union authorities immediately suspect him as a spy. Attempting to assuage their fears, he informs them of the Confederate's whereabouts to no avail. However, he's placed in the brig until Confederate officers under the guise of the contraband edict come to James City requesting his release and return to the Confederate Army. But ah, this very gesture vets Singleton and allows him to become the first soldier to enroll in what will become the first North Carolina Colored Infantry. And the first North Carolina Colored Infantry is federalized as the 35th United States Colored Troops just before the February 1864 Battle of Alusty, the only Civil War campaign in the state of Florida. Another soldier in that regiment, Luke Martin, had also escaped slavery, seeking freedom from Martin County, North Carolina, and the Pongo River bordering Washington County near the Pleasant Day town of Plymouth. And in January and February and March of 1863, swims through frigid waters, swamps evading bears, snakes and alligators, slave patrols with vicious dogs and Confederate home guards, and gets to James City and enrolls in the first North Carolina on the first day of enlistment, May 18th, 1863. The regiment was led by white officers per government policy. 
but Beecher's initial staff included Major John de Grasse, the first black doctor admitted to a medical society in the United States. The new regiment was joined by others to become part of Wilde's African Brigade, headquartered in Norfolk, Virginia. In early December 1863, Wilde decided to launch a two-pronged attack into areas of eastern North Carolina patrolled by Confederate guerrillas to demonstrate the effectiveness of his men. Nearly 2,000 soldiers moved to South Mills and on to Elizabeth City in the first independent combat action taken by what were known at the time as U.S. colored troops. Wilde's men burned partisan camps and homesteads and liberated hundreds of slaves during their raid. Some 200,000 U.S. colored troops served during the second half of the Civil War. More than 5,000 of those came from North Carolina. The second North Carolina colored infantry is raised also here in James City. A camp named for Union General Horace James on the outskirts of New Bern, where the second North Carolina Colored Infantry will be federalized into the 36th United States Colored Troop, mainly seeing action in the Overland Campaign of 1864 in southeastern Virginia. And the 36th United States Colored Troop was the absolute first Union Regiment to enter the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia to capture that city and help to end the war in the Old Dominion. For its exploits, the United States War Department reassigns the 36th U.S. Colored Troop from Richmond, Virginia to be part of the detail of Union General Gordon Granger's campaign to Galveston, Texas, where he arrives there at the bay on June 19, 1865, and what later becomes known as Juneteenth, or the campaign to spread the news of the Emancipation Proclamation and the circulation and the ratification of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution outlawing slavery. Then there's the third North Carolina Colored Infantry, which was federalized as the 37th United States Colored Troops. And men like Private Charles Jones would leave nearby swamps of Jones County and Trent to arrive here at James City, where they would also enroll in the 37th seeing duty mainly in the Carolinas. A Union Artillery Regiment, the 14th United States Colored Heavy Artillery, will be raised heading east down the Atlantic and North Carolina Railroad line from New Bern to the newly established town of Moorhead City which was founded in 1860 upon the completion of that Atlantic and North Carolina Railroad from the Confederate hub and railroad hub of Goldsboro. Where in Goldsboro, which becomes the objective of Union General William Tecumseh Sherman's campaign, not only to the sea in Savannah, Georgia, but through the Carolinas, whose main objective was to capture the brand new shiny city of Goldsboro, North Carolina, a transportation and railroad hub supplying both General Lee's Army of Northern Virginia and General Confederate General Johnston's Army in the Carolinas. A vital supply line that is captured in March of 1865 by Sherman, where in March that same month, the United States War Department authorizes the 135th 
United States Colored Troops Regiment, which builds the first continuous road from that new city of Goldsboro to the state capital of Raleigh through these swamps building corduroy roads allowing the 100,000 troops of General Sherman along with General Terry and Union General Kilpatrick coming up from Fort Fisher where they merged outside of Goldsboro to build that first road that results in the capture and the end of the war in 18, April 1865 in Raleigh, North Carolina. There were other United States Colored Troop regiments raised with soldiers in North Carolina, from North Carolina. Most namely the 2nd United States Colored Cavalry which is raised out of portions of Northeastern North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia with its equestrian culture. And that regiment is enrolled in Norfolk, Virginia. And they're also part of the contingency of Union troops who capture Richmond along with the 36 U.S. Colored Troops to help end the war with men like Parker David Robbins and his brother Augustus Robbins out of Hertford County, North Carolina, where the 2nd U.S. Colored Cavalry also becomes part of what we now call Juneteenth. African American soldiers saw action in a number of critical battles, including at Fort Fisher, North Carolina. Helping to earn their freedom in the scourge of slavery on our land and bring freedom for all. And in the words of Frederick Douglass, the Emancipation Proclamation was like a burst of freedom. Freedom for all. But lingering racial prejudice would stymie the military careers of many of those men who had fought for the Union. <laughs> 